these are some of the parts that I'm going to be using. Um, basically, the slides are some old surplus slides that I bought that are belt driven. And as you can see, they take a number T10 timing belt, and the belts were missing. And luckily, on eBay, I came across a couple of really nice heavy duty timing belts to replace them with. And then for attaching the belt, tensioning the belt, there are some devices built in here that I wound up just machining some little parts that will go under the belt and lock it in place and then there are some set screws to use to tension it. And for the other drives I'm going to be using uh, some solid plates and tensioning it differently. Um, basically these slides are not very heavy duty and I don't know what they'll support or what they'll work with but they're just some um, rounds that go in the end of the 80-20 extrusion. They lock in with a little um, secondary extrusion and then inside the bearings there are a couple of just ball bearings with a half round cut into them and then they have one set is fixed and then on the other set there's an adjustable eccentric to allow you to take the play out of them so for my first go around i'm going to be trying these slides and um, like i said i'm trying to use all surplus parts i've got some old servo motors that hopefully some of them will work out in the end and um, so this is what the slides are going to be these are the slides I'm going to be using it's, to assemble this slide what I'm going to do is I took the belt I cut it in half and I'm going to lay it down on the first half of the um, little thing to catch it and then I'm just going to Slide it up until the mounting holes line up. Get everything centered. And then just screw it down on this side. Next, I'm going to take the belt and just kind of stretch it tight. And pull it across here and lock it into where the adjustment should be. And then I'm just going to mark the belt and cut it on that line. I must admit this belt's not too easy to cut. It's got a um, bunch of steel reinforcing in it and the only thing you can cut it with is a good pair of tin snips. And as you can see it's all steel wire reinforcing in it. And I'm just going to take and do the same thing and slide this belt into place on this side and then put a couple of screws in and tension it. Now with everything tensioned up properly we have a real nice zero backlash drive. Now I have the um, framework over here with the other two belt slides that I have to put the belts in yet, but I'm going to be fastening my y-axis between these two plates. So as you can see I now have my y-axis in place pretty much ready to be motorized and um, using the similar slides I just have to thread some belts in to get my x-axis working and both of the sides of the x-axis will be tied together so that they both drive and can be synced together to square up the machine. The z-axis is pretty crude. I tried to make it dirty and cheap with what I had around. So it's a piece of um, one inch jig plate board with some brass bushings pressed in. And then there's a uh, small lead, the four start lead screw that has um, one of those anti-backlash nylon nuts on it. Not sure how it'll hold up, but it's what I had laying around. And then for the router, I 
machined a base that will hold the router and to start out with I have an old Harbor Freight router that I removed from a router table and I was not happy with so that will mount right in there and that's pretty much it for the Z axis some more switches and you know some motor drives and stuff like that but it, uh, actually it came out really tight and I'm surprised Here we are making a couple of the um, tensioning blocks for the drive belt system. Um, got a boring bar on the milling machine and open up the holes for the bearings to fit in. Alright, got the uh, Holes pockets counterboard for the bearings and looks like they are just a perfect slip fit. Just the way they should be. Okay, so moving along with the build of my router table, these are some legs that I built for it. Um as with the whole table, these are made from some scrap aluminum parts of an above ground pool that I had laying around. Kind of just cut up and screwed together and then um there are a couple blocks machined to go in the bottom to provide some leveling with bolt. So um, this will be what supports the router when it's done. And this is the uh, basic table that as I showed before it was put together with some um, 8020 extrusions and some old belt drive that I had laying around. Um, got some couple brackets I made to mount some old servo motors and um, I actually had to patch some encoders on from some Pittman motors hopefully it works out if not I'll um, look for something else but this is the uh, basic table itself everything's upside down now and I'm mounting the um, the legs to the bottom of the table um, one thing that I did find out with this 8020, if you want to attach anything to it, that a uh, 5 16th lag bolt actually slides right in and it works good for attaching uh, intersecting parts. I'm sorry, I mean carriage bolts. And next, I bolted on the um, electrical control box for the unit. Got a couple of medical grade switching power supplies that were some old surplus and it's just an old box that I had laying around and uh, we can flip the table over now there I got the table right side up and as you can see there's actually a shaft that's been placed between the two sides to tie the two belt drives together to synchronize everything and allow me to square up the table all right, next thing I gotta do is start putting the gantry on, I guess. And this is the uh, gantry assembly. It's another one of the belt-driven slides. And it has some uh, homemade Z-axis that I just took and put some brass bushings in and bored some holes out and had an old lead screw with a Delrin um, Zero Backlash nut on it I'm gonna try. And then right now I got a um, servo motor, but I still have to find an encoder for it. The side plates are all mounted now, and um, you can see the Y slide, which is another one of those old belt slides I had laying around, is mounted to the side plate. And there's the old Harbor Freight router that I yanked out of the router table, was going to toss, but I decided to give it a try. And a couple cables to run and I have to put on the um, the cable trough that goes on the back and a couple more TVs and stuff on the side um, so let's move on from here anyway, here's the uh, Y motor it's just another old Pittman servo motor that I had a patch together and a coder on from parts of other motors and it made a little bracket to mount it right up here on the side. 
and the wireways and the uh, gantry are all mounted now we're doing a little bit of wiring and actually running the cable chains back into the electrical box here got a little bit more wiring to hook up in there and got to mount the servo drives and um cable track going on the Z and a little more wiring and we'll be ready to go pretty soon. So at this point I've got it pretty much all assembled. I've got all the cable raceways in, the um, wires pretty much in, um, the electronic box mounted, a good deal of the wiring done. Um, I actually built some LED lights in to help me see what I'm doing when I'm debugging and whatnot. There are three motor drives that still have to be mounted in there. Put your LEDs on there and then I also have mounted LEDs along the bottom of the gantry so that I'll be able to see what's going on. And if I turn them off you can see as the LEDs go out as the power supply goes down. I had an extra 12 volts available so I figured I'd put it to use. So uh, this is the electrical box. Most of the wiring is done except for the um, gecko controllers I have to order yet. Um, there's a CNC for PC C10 breakout board that I use. Um, and then there's just some DC power distribution. Uh, fairly sizable heat sink for the gecko drives. And the fan to blow across the drives. And then on top of it all, I put some little LED lights in there that I had left over just to illuminate it when I'm working in there so I can see what I'm doing. And there the parallel port cable is now staked in there. And when I close the cover over, as you can see, the uh, lights go out in the box. But now we'll have to try to get it talking back to the PC, to the Mach 3. This is basically part one of my uh, router build. As you can see, we have um, pretty much all the accesses moving and most of the wires in. Have the Z axis there. I have to pick up a good table board yet, and I'm going to have to um, pick up my. Oops. I'm going to have to pick up a couple of gecko drives to um, get the motor spinning. But basically, we have a start on it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.